Next, let us consider uh, empirical formula and molecular formula. Okay, I would think that empirical formula we have some basis uh, because secondary level we have talked about this before. Empirical formula is just basically uh, working out the simplest ratio. That means if you have a particular compound and you have uh, whatever number of elements, what is the simplest ratio for the atoms, for all the different elements in the compound? Empirical formula, if we want to work this out, is actually fairly simple. We can talk about it in exercise 3. Molecular formula, of course, talks about the actual number of atoms that you can find in the compound. So comparing empirical versus molecular formula, which one is uh, more useful? Obviously, molecular formula is better, right? Because at least I know that how many carbon, how many hydrogen, how many oxygen we have inside the molecule or inside the compound, uh, we can actually try to figure out what is that compound. Empirical formula only talks about the ratio, simplest ratio. So it gives me some information, but the actual number of species, we don't know. So uh, in terms of the data that we have for empirical formula, maybe it's not so much. Usually we will prefer the molecular formula, but it is still giving me some information, but uh, we just need to keep in mind the limitation uh, involving what we can gather from empirical formula. But determining empirical formula, we should have some idea. So let's look at exercise 3. Exercise 3 given vitamin C contains all these different percentage of my carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen by mass. Correct? Then experimentally determine molar mass is 176.0. What is the empirical formula and the molecular formula for ascorbic acid? First thing we have to settle is the empirical formula. Empirical formula, I think what all of us would do is actually largely similar. Percentages we convert it to mass in 100 gram. So in 100 gram, since I have 40.92% of carbon, the mass of carbon will be 40.92. Follow the percentage. Huh? So I'll have 4.58 gram of hydrogen. 54.50 gram of oxygen. Find the mass in 100 gram. After we have mass, mass we cannot use it for comparison, correct? We want to convert it to number of moles, just divided by the atomic mass. So carbon will just divide by 12. Lah. Hydrogen just divided by 1. Oxygen divided by 16. So this will be the ratio. Or the number of moles. 3.4, 1,0, 4 point something, 3 point something. So once we have the number of moles of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, then the next thing we can do is we can divide it by the smallest value. In this case, the smallest number is this guy, uh, 3.406. So everything divided by 3.406, round this off to the nearest whole number. So the ratio, in this case, uh, back to this guy, 3 is to 4 is to 3. So the empirical formula will be here, C3H4O3. So far, so good. Molecular formula will just be a multiple of that. So what I do here is I just whole thing bracket, I put it as an N. Of course, in terms of molecular formula, uh, the reason why I don't put it this way, maybe some of us will say that, why don't I, or can I put this as uh, C3N and then H4N, obviously, the O3N, put the N in. Can we do it this way? Uh, of course we can, but you notice later when we do calculation, I will still have to pull out the common factor N to solve for N. So I don't think it is really necessary for me to write this nicely in this way. I just put it as whole thing bracket N, Solve for n, then later when I write out the molecular formula, I present it nicely. Huh? C6H8O6. Supposed to have 6 carbon, 8 hydrogen, and 6 oxygen. Of course, this final answer we cannot put in this way. Huh? The final answer I cannot put it as uh, 3 carbon, 4 hydrogen, 3 oxygen. Oh, bracket 2. We, we don't leave our answer in this way, correct? But uh, you notice here the reason why I do that is it makes it more convenient for me to do the calculation to solve for n. Okay, just to clarify. Uh, also, you notice the value for n, we round off to the nearest integer because the number of atoms, number of carbon, number of hydrogen, number of oxygen in the molecule, it has to be a whole number. So therefore, there's no need for me to round off my n as specific. It is not meaningful. It has to be a whole number. So you notice in terms of rounding off or putting my answer to the appropriate number of significant figures, huh? Uh, it has to be, again, uh, it has to be meaningful, all right? It's not just pure uh, mathematics. Whatever that we are getting and uh, the number of significant figures that we want to round this off to, it has to make sense and it has to be relevant. Relevant to 
the concepts that we are doing relevant to the chemistry concepts.